So let's talk about the second episode. Okay. So, well, what's important to say about the first episode, if I can just finish mm -hmm. on that, is that my suspension only lasted for four weeks. Four weeks. But in that time, there had been a campaign of character assassination against me. And it was very, very effective. Run, like I say, by all the media and all the papers. Real character assassination. But I was back. In the party but according to some particularly on the right of the Labour Party um, and you can have a look and see what the MPs were saying about this or certain MPs it wasn't good enough that the compliance unit had investigated and gone through all my Facebook all my public appearances everything I had written and found no case to answer on anti-semitism because when you have that kind of accusation apparently it doesn't matter what is investigated it will not be accepted so there is no court of justice that you can go to none that is recognized you can't appeal. by our media you can't appeal the media gives you no voice whatsoever it's very so important survived this character assassination yes Nobody from the media, from any channel, no. has contacted you no. to get your... No. 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 Okay? So that's that. So then I keep going on, but I'm a bit more careful now, you know. Like when I go to speak, I write down everything I'm going to say and, you know. So then, what I'm then told, well, if you watch the Al Jazeera documentary, you'll see um, that... Not, that um, that operative, maybe I shouldn't call him an operative, but he's the embassy worker um, who says, who says, in in response to a question of what shall we do about Jackie Walker, he basically says, you have to follow everything she does and don't let it go. So the finger was on me, and that's what they did. The Twitter campaign, the Facebook campaign the media campaign, the references to me didn't stop. So, so let's just get this, let's just get this straight. In this world, in this world, what being a racist means, apparently, is missing off one word in a paragraph. It doesn't matter the fact that I've been an anti-racist activist for all my life. It doesn't matter that I've been a victim of racism. It doesn't matter that I have faced the fascists on the streets repeatedly. No, that doesn't matter. What matters is what the Jewish Chronicle says. What matters is what the Jewish labor movement says. So that's, you know, we have to be clear on but that. Can we just, uh, I'll just adjust this again. Sorry. Uh, um, also, um, you talk about being a racist in their eyes, yeah. um, but um, what was it that you think annoyed them? It's not you weren't being a racist, <laughs> uh, you were talking about a specific issue. I was talking, and I will say it again, I was talking about how we look at suffering and Holocaust and history, and what I was insisting on was that all suffering is equal. Whether you're Jewish, whether you're black, whether you're white, whatever you are, no one person's suffering, no one people's suffering should have any more space in our concerns but of than course, any other. But of course you know that many countries have a Holocaust Museum, the British government is about to build yes, one. Yes, I do. Um, the American government has um, yeah. built a number of those. Yeah. Um, there is no museum that I know of to slavery. There is one museum, well it's a, a kind of department within uh, Liverpool, within the um, museum, uh, Maritime Museum up there. And I think Greenwich Maritime Museum has a small section. But let's be clear as well on this issue about Holocaust Day. Um, 
what Holocaust Day actually commemorates are holocausts post the Nazis. So you can get in on that uh, if, if your holocaust, if your genocide, whichever word you want to talk about, happened post Nazis. Now, what that conveniently omits are the 12 million or so Africans in the Belgian Congo who about 40, 50 years, only about 40, 50 years previously, were killed by King Leopold of the Belgian, who still has a statue in Belgium commemorating him. Now, can you imagine, can you imagine how that makes people of African descent means? So, even without that, it doesn't commemorate the 20, 30, whoever knows, million Africans who were killed during the, the, the African slave trade. It doesn't commemorate the black children, babies in America who were experimented on by having spikes put into their brains while they were alive. It doesn't commemorate the women who had their vaginas ripped apart while they were awake so that we would be able to get a speculum that actually for most of the time you know after that most of the 50 years after that work was done was only used on white women because because apparently black people don't feel pain in the same way as white people that conveniently conveniently we don't have a museum to commemorate that now of you course, can... we also don't have a museum to commemorate the killing of the whole of North American population. Of course, or the Aboriginal people in Australia. It's very convenient that actually we don't have those because, especially in the UK, we can wash our hands and say, look, we weren't involved in any of this. We weren't involved in this. Now, you can disagree with me. I'm happy for you to come to me and I've had people say, you know what, I disagree with you. Let's have that discussion. Let's have a discussion about history. Let's have a discussion about fact. But how dare you call me a racist for trying to do that? How dare you call me a racist for trying to do that? And that tells you something about the problem we have in this society as black people. Now, I'm in a complex situation here because I'm black and I'm Jewish, but can I tell you, the problems I have are not about being Jewish, except from certain Jews. The problem I have in my life, the reasons why I've been beaten up and spat on in my life, the reasons why I've been excluded in my life, are not because I'm Jewish, it's because I'm black. And let's actually be clear about that. I want to ask about this, because... Uh... You I'm talk, sorry, I get no, a bit. This is I, great. I, I get a bit. Jackie, this I get, is this is what I get we need. Very this. angry about well, about quite right. What's, quite right. what's going on? Quite you right. know, I mean, how dare they? Yeah. How dare they? These people. Well, this is exactly what we are talking about. Yes. Now, um, not only um, what you say is totally true, but not only that. In Britain, let's talk a minute about Britain. Mm. Um, Jews are not. Um, attacked physically that I know they are uh, actually overrepresented uh, in more or less every walk of life apart from prisons mm. um, and at the same time mm. their Islamophobia mm. is uh, everywhere mm. racism against blacks mm. and people of color is mm. as it was if not stronger and Eastern Europeans and, Eastern Europeans yeah, yeah. and so on mm. so what is this yeah, it's madness? Extraordinary. It is a madness. I mean, um, I wrote something uh, recently, I called it the whitewashing of racism. I mean, when you have the extraordinariness of getting papers like, say, for example, The Express and The Daily Mail, uh, counting themselves as being anti-racist because they are part of this anti-Semitism witch hunt, then you know that something mad is going on. Because just remember, these are the newspapers who, when we had a Jewish leader of the Labour Party, 
took photos of him eating a bacon sandwich and were actually pretty, I would say, anti-Semitic against this man, or not directly against him, but against his father. So we have a very strange turn of events, don't we, that suddenly um, uh, agents and organisations, which I would count of as uh, being pretty racist, including UKIP, you know, are suddenly pointing the finger mm -hmm. at anti-racists, but only for one reason, for one reason, because of anti-Semitism. There's something wrong.